I'm back, fresh off the track. Ah, just got my suit off. Um, so where are we at? Uh, well, we'll start with what just took place. Just for me and you, and during strength, unfortunately, landed in the same race. Uh, Travis floated out of there with enduring strength, and Scott Coulter kind of run him out of the five hole. I opened up the six hole, and he went to back enduring strength into the into the hole, and he, he was in the middle of the turn, and he rolled off. So, um, you know, in hindsight, I wish I drove enduring strength, and that's not a dig on Travis. Travis does a good job. I just know the horse better. So uh, that was unfortunate, but it happened. So ex uh, the way the new rules are, I don't think. No, I know enduring strength doesn't have to uh, doesn't have to qualify now. He needed a good line tonight as far as speed goes. So I think probably it makes more sense to take him over Wednesday and train him in 57 at Mohawk and get that tightener in him that we needed. It's unfortunate, but it's not uh, the end of the world. Forged and fire is in to go at the Meadows. Finally, we sent him there in February. He's finally in to go in June. <laughs> oh, goodness, what a disaster. Uh, Forged and fire uh, hopefully has grown up a little bit and used this time to uh, relax. He was doing pretty good things for us. Actually, Travis won with him right before we sent him to uh, the Meadows. So hopefully he picks up where he left off. Frontier Cruise, a little flat the other night again. Both him and Sunshine and Shade have not come back good. Now, two different scenarios. Frontier Cruise has been adequate. Uh, it's been adequate, but um, not poor. Sunshine and Shade has been abysmal his last two. Um, so uh, we need to work on one and really just focus and... and uh, push the other guy so Frontier Cruise is not going to be racing in the grassroots there's always that prospect side which is like the third tier and then we have the overnights but my goodness he's got to pick his pants up here he was racing better in in uh, the mid-season of his two-year-old season than he is right now giddy up max uh come back kind of how I thought I was worried he might just kind of so-so pace 56 the other day now in fairness to him no in fairness to him um in fairness to Giddy Up Max, that was his first start back. So let's throw him a bone. Uh, not a big deal there. Uh, I'm not coming tomorrow to drive him in the last race. I think maybe Travis or uh, Jason Reiner are driving. I'm not sure. Globe trotting. Uh, I wouldn't say it was the most beautiful. It wasn't uh, graceful, but powerful nonetheless. Globe trotting looked fantastic last night. Out of the nine hole, crossed over to the front. 55 and 1. Trace Tietrich did a great job driving her. So good, in fact, he'll likely get the assignment next time. Pretty hard for me to take T. Trace T. I'm not going to scurry across the border, leave my family, because uh, I can't come back, right? I have to quarantine. So I would have to leave, which I, I will do eventually, uh, probably the first part of July uh, when the babies go over. But since Trace already got a good start into all the three, three of these horses, got a real good feel for them last night. Trace, if he wants to come drive them in Northfield, who am I to say no? Oh, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, Harness AM was entered for Monday or Tuesday, but I don't think she got in. I think hopefully she'll get in on Thursday. Hometown Boys is racing tonight at Kawartha Downs. Again, is he grassroots material? Prospect, which is the third tier? I don't know, but I can tell you this. He's better right now than he's ever been in his entire life. Kevin likes him. I like him. He's starting. I think he's turning the corner. I think He's turning the corner. So we'll see how far down that road he gets now that he's turned the corner. But Hometown Boys is in to go tonight. I'll Play It Alone is in to go also at the Meadows on Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday. I'm not sure yet. Uh, he hasn't raced in a while. Hopefully he uses this time to his advantage also. Inland Beach is in to go Monday at Grand River. Kicked that wall and had that bruise in her, her hind ankle. So she's going to be a little bit short. But... Uh, Geez, Mario's had a bad run at the start, hasn't he? But I can assure you, looking at his roster of two-year-olds, that will come to an end soon enough. Uh, as I said to him the other day, you know, the whole Nancy Allison thing, and Rooney was no good here last week. Now, Enduring Strength just made a break. It's tough, man. It's tough on a trainer when these things happen. But, you know, the old adage rings true in this game so, so many times. When it rains, it pours. And... Um, it can turn around just as quick. So a uh, rough start to, to the 2020 stakes season-ish for uh, Mario Bergeron. But I'm sure he'll bounce back just fine. Inland Beach is in on Monday. Johan didn't get in this week. He'll be entered in to go as soon as he can. Uh, just for me and you. Just raced her right there. Now, I was stuck three wide getting into the last turn. You can't be three wide with just for me and you. She gets a little hikey in the turns. You just can't be there. 
you know, I knew it was coming and I was going to drop back to the inside, but the inside looked as, just as dead as the outside. I rolled the dice, took my chances. Uh, she stayed at it, finished up fifth. I don't know, she trotted 59, 58 in a piece, but I thought she raced rather well in doing it. So, um, just for me and you, a good start for her. She liked Woodbine much, much better. That's where she should probably be. Her next start is Woodbine. Knockdown drag out, maybe Thursday. I know I told everybody Thursday for sure. I am going to, we went with her today. She was okay. Uh, possibly Thursday. I'm going to say 75% chance of knockdown drag out coming out on Thursday. I'm really just trying to get her to, here's my problem, right? Uh, she shut her air off last week, so that means there was a little bruise in her palate. Last thing you want to do is try and race a bully horse back after they've shut their air off. Case in point would be cruising in style. It's very difficult to fix that problem, and it can only compound if it just goes unaddressed like it didn't happen. So will she be fine? I'm sure she'll be fine. Um, I'm going to get a good look at her. You know what I might do? It's Saturday today. I'm going to jog her Sunday and see how she feels. That's what I will do, and I'll make my decision after that. Uh, Miss Brampton Beast is back in here, coming off a real, real good second and 53. Again, I don't know where this filly fits, grassroots or overnight or whatnot. Um, 53 and 4, there was a time that would mean you were the best horse in Ontario. Now it just means you're competent, competitive. So she drew the rail again. She's a good drawn bugger anyway. She drew the rail again here on Tuesday. Muscle Chrome racing tonight. She's likely a prospect filly. Will likely work her way up to condition, condition claimer, condition type things throughout the summer. But there's nothing wrong with doing that. And that can be an effective horse if she puts it all together into the summer, throughout the summer, and into the fall. So that's where we're at with Muscle Chrome. She is in with Hometown Boys tonight. I don't think she can beat Hometown Boys. Had I known they were just drawing together, I don't know how I didn't know that. But if I didn't, had I thought of that, they wouldn't have been entering on the same day, but they were. We're going to get a start into Muscle Chrome tonight. Nancy Allison, an absolutely horrific race the other night. Uh, she warmed up so good. She was so quiet in the post parade and then paced. I, I don't know why. We tested her feet today. Mild soreness in her feet. Took her AST level. Her muscle count, not high at all. Maybe it was her. Maybe it was just her feet. Uh, do a little work on her this week, and we'll race her... I'm gone away. No, I'm not gone next Saturday. No, I'm not leaving. I might bring her right here next Saturday. That's a possibility for Nancy Allison. Need your opinion race. Great last night. Third closing, 53 and 4. Probably pays 54 in a bit, I guess. 50, maybe 52 and 4. I don't know. She raced good. She finished third. She was closing up. Really impressed with Need Your Opinion. Olympic hopeful, I don't think has raced yet. I gotta reach out to Andy Angie and talk about maintenance man. Who why didn't I talk about maintenance? He's not on here. There's the horse. And I missed. Maintenance man. Oh, because he's not a three-year-old. That's why. Silly me. Uh, Olympic hopeful. I'll reach out to Andy, the Angie this week. She should be in to go soon. Uh, or is maybe even racing tonight. But I will find out today. Path of Totality made a break the other night. Um, a, a few little tinkering changes need to be done with her. She's close. She's right on the, right on the cusp of being fine. I think uh, Kevin and I discussed it after three or four minor little things I think will make a big difference with this filly and we're going to make those changes and race her back next week really blue chip is back in to go this will be an opportunity if she gets rough down the lane at Woodbine and there's lots of lane at Woodbine Mohawk Park if she gets rough down the lane finishing up her mile this week the hobbles will go back on her immediately not very happy about this whole um making a break last week costing yourself a win it's kind of an odd place. She can leave fast, so therefore she can trot the straightaways. She never put a step in coming to the half. Another straightaway. Moved her down the back stretch three wide. Another straightaway. Just the one on the end of the mile she seemed to have a problem with. So it's a little frustrating. Uh, we'll see how she races on Monday. Rooney Blue Chip's going to need a couple more starts. I know there's a lot of people out there saying, come on, Rooney. Rooney is a giant. He's a big baby, and he needs a couple of starts. Is he going to be great at Mohawk? No, probably not. I'd like to grab some money with him, have him finish up his mile good, and get him back on track. He didn't really like Georgian Downs, didn't get away well, didn't really respond well when we moved him. There's a lot more to offer there. And if he doesn't race great on Monday, we have some options with shoeing with him also. We still have him hung up the same way we did in March. As far as shoeing is concerned, we can make some changes there if need be. Rose Run Valiant's racing Monday, actually kind of finding his own, coming into his own a little bit. Qualified well, five to one, I think, morning line on Monday in the Buckeye, I believe. So uh, Rose Run Valiant 
looking to do some damage in Ohio this week. Rose Run Versatile, I watched her train this morning. She trained all right, she's into Gulf Grand River. Is this a good spot for her? No, it is not. Because she doesn't get around a half mile track well, but she wasn't getting in at Mohawk. So I opted to put Rose Run Versatile in at Grand River. We'll see how she gets around a smaller track. Sebastian Yu is in to go. Trained him today, I would say he was marginally better. No, better than marginally better. He was better. I'll stop, a, stop short of much better. He was better. Definitely raceable. I think he'll be fine. Uh, but he's in tough. When Woodbine starts up Tuesday, I think, Mohawk Park, I think, where he's in to go. Sometimes things happen. He's in Monday, coming off a big win here. I think he's 5-6-1. to one. But he'll do better at Scioto than he will at Northfield. But I'm interested to see how he's going to do Mon I think it's Monday, maybe Tuesday at Northfield. Spirit of Dio will be coming. Ah, skip. Spend that money. Spend that money. Race great the other night. Of our three trotters, she trotted faster than either of the other two, Globe Trotting or Compass Rose DC, but didn't get any moolah. She ended up sixth. Uh, raced good, kind of in a spot where she was asked to sprint on the end of it. 28 seconds is kind of max speed for her right now. That's probably the fastest last quarter of her life. So um, begs the question, do we drop her into the Buckeye or do we race her into the sire, in the Sire Stakes? I want to say Sire Stakes. And my, my answer to that was simple to a client that asked me that today. If we didn't have globe trotting, would we race, spend that money in Compass Rose DC just in the Sire Stakes? I think so. Why wouldn't you? No, they're not the best fillies. They're not the best ones we have. But they're good. They're competitive. They can do. you got a three-year-old trotting filly can trot in 55. For the love of God, I would think they would be Sire Stakes material. Spirit of Dio is on her way back. John had called me a little frustrated. He sent Spirit of Dio over to Irv Miller to have a look at. I talked to Irv on the phone about her. He's going to have a quick look at her. When she's ready, when her papers are ready, she's going to come home. I think, you know, we knew what it took to make her tick last year. Hopefully, it's just a matter of putting that blueprint back on that big, beautiful frame of Spirit of Dio and getting her back going. Now, a horse that is in uh, desperate need of some help is Sunshine and Shade. Um, two weeks ago, he raced poorly. We changed a few things. We trained him up real hard, and he raced unbelievably worse. Had the vet scope him. It's clean. I haven't taken his blood yet, but... Uh, I don't know what's going on with this horse, but he is certainly not in a good frame of mind right now. Uh, Mario thought that maybe he was bleeding. The vet said he could be bleeding way down in his lungs, and fine. We can train him on Lasex. I'm not certain that that is going to help. So uh, it is a little perplexing what is going on with him. And I know some people have said, oh, just change burns. You... It frustrates me when, when people just think you just change barns and the horses go forward. Oh, just send them to Carmen or Richard or whoever. No, we're not doing that. And uh, I, I understand that that people just think that, um, you know, listen, many people have bought horses off us, claimed horses off us, and not too many of them have gone forward. And that's because you can say a lot about other trainers or these trainers, but all the trainers we employ are professionals. They do their job very well, they take their job very seriously, and what's going on with Sunshine and Shade right now isn't gonna be fixed by getting on a truck and going to a different burn. And we're going to look into it, we're working as hard as we can to fix it, but it just seems like I saw him today. Walked down the shed row, he didn't eat all his hay cubes, he was laying in the corner, you know, just looked like he was in a funk, which he may be. So how do we fix that? It's a great question. Uh, it would help if we knew definitively what the issue was. I assume there'll be something in his blood that will give us an indicator. Um, as of right now, it's not his airway, so that's good. It's not allergies. It's not his heart. It's not his lungs. So hopefully, um, he's not lame. So hopefully there'll be something show up in his blood work that will give us an idea of what is going on with, Sabat, with uh, Sunshine and Shade. I understand that people are frustrated, and I'm frustrated, and Mario is very frustrated. But at the same time, blaming people because the horse isn't as good as we need him or want him to be right now, or even as good as he even remotely could be right now, should be. Um, you know, throwing blame at people doesn't help. But I know people don't want to. I know, you know, I'm, I'm the same way, right? I don't want to be Sunshine and Shade. I'm pissed off, too. But at the same time, these are living, breathing animals. And, you know, um, you'll have nights where some horses can work through stuff, right? Globe trotting's not near 100%. Still won a sire stakes, sire stakes elimination. Um, and then you have other horses like Sunshine and Shade that clearly something is eating away at them. Finished up the track. So um, 
you need to recognize that every horse is a little bit different, just like every human is a little bit different. And the argument can be made, well, maybe somebody else would just get along with them better. What I saw today laying in the stall was not a horse in search of a new trainer. It was a horse that was just kind of in a bad spot right now. He's not, he's not ailing. He's not sore. He's not hurting. He's just in a funk. So we'll see if we can shake, shake some of the ring rust off our boy, sunshine and shade this week you probably won't see him resurface for a couple of weeks until we figure out what's going on usually some good exercise will help them come out of whatever's bothering him but it would help if we knew what that was so we'll be relying on the blood work for the first of the week to tell us that Susie k raced great the other day second in two minutes probably one of the best miles of her life she was coming too. another much less than a quarter of a mile and she wins <laughs> another I don't know five feet and she gets there but she raced well she always tries though she's just a trier beautiful filly Trafalgar was an absolute freight train the other day Jason Ryan had asked me if she was going to be back in to go here we entered her back in but she was a little bit over the class entered her at Mohawk and didn't get in she'll be in to go a lot of horses are being entered right if you look at the box right now sure Georgia might have eight races where they usually have 10 or 12 right same as Kawartha even Sarnia um Grand River so um what they're trying to do is get everybody raced, and there's still a lot of horses here. I suspect when the stake programs start up, a lot of these non winners of two, non winners of three, non winners of one classes will free up some space. But until that happens, you get this this log jam of non winners of one, two, and three horses, and you see it right now with our horses. Didn't get in that well this week. Watch Avenue is in to go tomorrow night at a Georgian. I know Mario is listed on him. He told me he doesn't think he's going to make it. Travis will probably be happy to drive him. And then Willpower Fashion, I'm happy to report, is getting better. He's been off antibiotics for four days now. His temperatures are staying lower. Uh, but it's uh, a long way back for Willpower Fashion, if there's a way back. So uh, that's a discussion we have to have with our clients that own Willpower Fashion with me. I'm the vast majority owner of him. I fell in love with him at the sale, and I've owned him ever since. And uh, he was really close to being in an, in an incredibly difficult position and putting me in an incredibly difficult position. But thank God he um, he made it back. I mean, yes, we race horses, but we love horses here too, right? And it breaks my heart when things like this happen. But Will's eating, he's drinking, he's going out in the paddock, he's feeling good, still coughing, still has some discharge from his lungs, I'm certain. Um, I don't know what kind of uh, damage, if any, long-term was done, but I know he needs a lot of time off to recover. So willpower fashion appears to maybe hopefully be out of the woods and once he has got a, a clean uh, bill of health where he hasn't been on antibiotics he doesn't need any inflammatories to keep his temperature down he's eating he's coming back around at that point he goes to a nice big green field for um an undetermined amount of time uh zeb sunshine raced great here last week he's not back in to go geez we're having a real tough time getting these horses back in to go right and not much i can do about that uh i just explained why I, su I suspect Zeb Sunshine, you'll see him show up at Mohawk on Thursday or so. Hopefully, Zeb Sunshine looked great here last week. A little rolly late in the mile. I'm pretty sure between Kevin and I, we know exactly what took place. And we are moving to combat that. But Zeb Sunshine clearly got a ton of speed first over at the 3.8s out, out all the way. And if I had a, had a little more confidence down the lane that he wouldn't make an error, I still would have won by an easy length. But he got picked off the wire. Ah, that happens. So, I'm all done here at Georgian Downs. It's 8 o'clock. I'm going to head home. Tomorrow, I'm going to finish up. we got a very, very in-depth look at the two-year-olds, what's going on with them, what I see happening with them. Some of them might make starts next week. Maybe some of them right here. So, I'll be talking to you guys in just, not just a minute, talk to you tomorrow, which is Sunday, and let you know all about how the two-year-olds are this week, where I see them going, what I see them doing, who I liked, did I have some issues with some of them? If so, what were they? Be back to you guys really soon.